you know, we all know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's okay. I know already. Um, if you have any any just anything you want to say to us, um, feel free to send us an email. That email address is thinking sideways podcast at gmail dot com. And I think that is everything that I need to tell you. I think it is. I think it's all the stuff that you guys skip. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. So another mystery solved. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. Let's talk about another princess. Okay. Talk about Disney princesses. Yeah, we can talk about Disney princesses. Let's talk about princess cruises. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 Why don't we, why don't we yeah. talk about Disney princess cruises? Perfect. Huh. Okay. What do you guys want to talk about first? Well, hey there, and thanks for joining us again. This is Thinking Sideways, the podcast, and I am Steve, as always, joined by Joe. Hello. And Devin. Hey. Who I like to introduce. Uh, <laughs> Instead of yeah. letting us do it for ourselves. No, no, I don't. I, don't, I don't, can't always remember my own name, so it's a good thing. Yeah. i got to micromanage this stuff. It's you good. Know? You know what? We need a micromanager. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. Uh, well, today uh, we're going to get into a story that I've uh, I've been really looking forward to, to sharing with everybody. As the, you two know, but our listeners probably don't, recently I was in England. And, it took such a long time. But yeah, it was it's such an extended amount of time. But uh, when I was there, I, uh, of course, was touring around London, and I got the chance to go to the Tower of London and was reminded of a story that I heard of but had never really thought much of until I actually got to see the site where a bunch of the action happened. Mm. By the way, just as an aside, I was the first time I saw the tower in London myself. I was mm-hmm. kind of surprised because I was expecting an actual tower. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a fortress, you know. It's, it's, it's a it's, castle. Yeah, it's very cool, but where's the tower? Uh, there's several of them. Yeah. They're, they're short towers. They're short squat towers. They don't really look like towers. I just remember how giant the ravens are. The ravens? Oh, yes. They are disturbingly big birds. Giant there. Well, they're hand-fed, basically. So, yeah. What is it, seven of them? There has to be seven yeah. on the grounds at all times or the monarchy falls. Is that what the legend is? Oh, really? Yeah, they... I not know about this particular story. Yes, I, 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 seven might not be re- the right number, but I know that there, maybe it's nine, but they have to have them on the grounds. And, so, and they're, they're big. They're monsters. I mean, like, ravens you see out kind of like when you are hiking mm-hmm. around here. Not crows, but ravens are not as big as these things. And maybe it's because I was a kid. I am. Yes. Yeah. Well, they are European ravens. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. well, that's, that's what it is. Oh, versus how Af- silly of me. Of versus course. African raisins. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we're going down a path. Yes, yeah. we're not going down the path. <laughs> no, uh, so anyway, uh, the story that we're going to talk about is the princes in the tower. This is a story about two young princes hmm. that were in the Tower of London. Thus, the name. I know. Really. Uh, so our story takes place in 1483. And at that time, the people that we're going to be talking about are aristocracy, so they have really fancy titles to go with everybody's names. And they're all the same names. And they're all the same names, which makes it a little rough to keep straight and tell. So I'm going to preface this episode right now with saying I'm going to use everybody's more commonly known names. In other words, the first uh, king that we're going to talk about is Edward IV going to refer to him as Edward IV, Mm -hmm. not his full title, just for simplicity's reasons. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, even I'm going to be confused. I I, I could never keep track of all that stuff. To to this day, and I'm sure I could have found out, like, say, why why Prince was his name. It's called the Prince of Wales. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, he's the Prince of Wales. I'm sorry, but Wales is like another country over there. You know, you're the Prince of Wales. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Some of that stuff is just kind of hard to figure out. I'll, I'll explain it to you later, Joe. Okay. Just not now. Okay. Okay. (laughs) All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the story itself, which is on April 9th, 1483, King Edward IV, the King of England, dies unexpectedly. Sick for a couple of weeks and then just up and dies. Mm. Um, it happened a lot in those days. It did happen a lot in those days. Especially Was when it? you were the king and somebody wanted your throne. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did leave heirs. 
he had two sons. They he were had, legitimate sons too, right? They were by his wife. They were by his wife. Yeah. Yes. So they they were not, you know, from a mistress. Mm-hmm. They were from the woman he was were married. To. Oh, you know that that question did sort of pop up, but you're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get there. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have Prince Edward who is referred to as Edward V, and then, and he was 13 when this happened. Okay. So he's a boy king. And then there is his little brother, Richard, who is, because he doesn't have an official number title, we're gonna just refer to him as Richard, the Duke of York. He's nine. Can we call him Richie? No. You can call him Richie. Great. All right, so we- be cool. I mean, you're nine years old, you get to be a duke. Okay. <laughs> you're a duke I think he was there? duke from the day he was born. Yeah, uh, yeah that's yeah. the way it works. Uh, Well, what happens, of course, is their father dies, and their uncle, whose name is Richard III, yep, it's already getting confusing, he is declared the Lord Protector of the boys by the king before he dies. Now, this isn't recorded officially anywhere, but everybody presumes that that's what happens, because he takes him and he goes to take the boy back to London to reside in the Tower of London. Yeah. The Tower of London is traditionally where the king would stay until the coronation. Mm-hmm. His coronation, the coronation of our young king, Edward V, was originally supposed to take place on the 4th of May, 1483. Then it was pushed back to June 25th of that year. Before the coronation could pl- take place, their uncle Richard III began to cast doubts on the validity of the marriage between the deceased king and his wife. Wait, okay, sorry. Elizabeth Woodville. And was she alive at the time? She was alive. Okay. Yeah. She had, she was still alive. She had several daughters at the sa- as well. They they had, I think, a total of nine children. Oh my God. Not all of whom survived. Yeah. Child. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's why you buy in bulk. Yeah. <laughs> you get in those days? days. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nine kids. I believe it was nine children. Oh. Yes. Evidently, the church got behind this idea that the marriage was invalid. And this was actually uh, brought to the front, uh, let's see here, it was the 22nd of June, 1483. So like six days before the coronation. Three days before the oh, coronation. Oh gosh, okay, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the a preacher at St. Paul's Cross claimed that Richard had... Uh, was the only Richard the Third mm-hmm. was the only legitimate heir to the crown because they were saying that his brother Edward the Fourth had initially been engaged to another woman and then married the mother of these two young princes. That's the weirdest thing I ever heard mm-hmm. in my life. It's it's very weird. I think it's something to do with I don't know if it's contractual is the way that is the right word for it, but I don't know exactly how they treated engagement back in those days. Yeah, basically it claimed that because he was engaged to someone else, he couldn't get married to her the way he did. Surprising nobody noticed until this particular moment. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, there's, there's I mean, some uh, doubts as to whether or not he was actually engaged to the woman that they said he was engaged to. Which what, is, was she uh, like a queen or a princess of a different place, or was she? Uh, no, she was. She was just ro- like a. She was English royalty. Oh. But yeah, it was it was really really weird. So what happens is this this sermon happens, and then on the 25th of June which at this point I believe the coronation has already been shoved back Mm -hmm. again, Mm -hmm. though there's no official date for it to happen now. Uh, A group of, and I quote, lords, knights, and gentlemen petitioned Richard to take the throne. Everybody's changing their allegiance from the current king who has not yet been crowned. Who's 13 years old. Who's 13 years old. Uh And they're throwing their weight and their beliefs over to Richard III. Who's Uh, an adult. Yeah. Who's an adult. And these guys uh, probably just saw which way the wind was blowing. I mean, when they heard the news about the declaration about the marriage, they knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. These people were not stupid. And it's hard to say in, in the history, it's hard to get a clear sense of who's first started casting these doubts about Edward IV and his wife. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it was Richard III, if it was somebody else. How this whole thing happened, we're not exactly positive. Yeah, it's kind of lost in the sands of time, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, but basically, obviously enough, Richard takes... The 
issue at the church with the validity of Edward IV's marriage actually gets passed into an act by British Parliament the next year. Uh, it's called Titulus Regis, I believe is how you say it, the Titulus Regis Act, and that stated that their marriage, King Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville, was invalid. So therefore, those boys could absolutely not be king, and none of their children were... Had any kind of right. Had any claim to the throne at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so these little guys are uh, kind of left out in the cold. Yeah. Yeah, so. but they're still family, right? So you can kind of assume, even if, you know, the uncle's like, well, if they've got a mother who's alive. And they're separated interest. from their mother. Their mother had initially gone into hiding uh, when her husband died. And then the boys didn't come to the tower at the same time. The young king came first, and then later his brother came and joined him. Uh, I and believe they that, found him. I wonder... they were misplaced. Well, basically what happens, Joe's kind of hitting it, is that the two princes were seen on the grounds of the Tower of London in the spring of 1483, and then according to some writings, they just up and disappeared, and some others, they were seen less and less and were moved into the rear apartments of the castle. And then they were gone and they were never seen again alive. I wonder if maybe the mother kind of knew what was up, right? I mean, why does a woman go into hiding when her husband mm -hmm. no. is, yeah. is, dies from totally legitimate causes, ostensibly, right? Mm -hmm. With two sons who have totally legitimate, again, ostensibly, claims to the throne. And it is, I've read some accounts of what she could have been thinking because the thing is, she does eventually sort of gives him allegiance to Richard the mm Third, -hmm. and then later on she then shifts her allegiance to the next king which is Henry the mm Seventh. -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think that to steal the words out of Joe's mouth she saw the writing on the wall she knew it was yeah. she knew that the only way her family was going to survive was to play ball yeah because she had more more oh, right, uh, the daughter. more children yes, yet still yes to murder. her daughters and also you know I mean it, it, it who knows maybe he was holding the kids still and she was being blackmailed Although more likely the kids were already dead. And or maybe she, just, she um, thought. You know, yeah. decided now I'll just protect what's left of my family. Yeah. Maybe she thought they were still alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's jump forward. Yeah, sorry. About 200 years. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, 200 years? Yes, 200 oh years. Whoa, what? Like we're going to get the time machine. Okay, 200 years have gone by. Mm -hmm. It is 1674. We are still on the grounds at the Tower of London. And we are at the White Tower which is one of several towers on the grounds. And there's some workmen digging under the stairs in the tower, and they come across a wooden box. And now I imagine these guys, hey, there's a big wooden box buried under the stairs. It's, probably it's gold. gold. It's yeah. got to be gold. Yeah. yeah. They no, crack gone. it open, not gold. Yeah. It's got the skeletons of two children in it. Can I can I interject something yeah, here? Have yeah. you noticed that it's always workmen who find the skeletons? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would, that's why I don't want to be a workman. I know, no, seriously. I haven't grizzly. found one yet, and I'm really happy about it. Uh, but no, they they find this box, and this the the remains that were in this box are widely believed to be the remains of these two princes who went missing at ages 13 and nine. Uh, again, I've, I've seen accounts that say that there was velvet wrapped around them in the box, which would lead credence to the theory that, yeah, they probably were royalty, because common people didn't have velvet. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. A very expensive fabric. Crazy expensive mm -hmm. at that point in time. Yes. It's still expensive now, and we can like mass produce it you super know what I, easily. Yeah, you know what I paid for my velvet jumpsuit? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I don't want to know how much you paid for All that. right. So back to the story. Oh, yeah. I'll show it to you later. Okay. The remains that they found were later on, I would say within a month or so, were placed in an urn and were interred in Westminster Abbey by King Charles II. Hmm. But there was some analysis done of the bones. Okay. This was done in 1933. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but the royalty actually agreed to open up the urn and let somebody examine it. 
So the burn, the, they didn't burn the bones. It was no. ashes. It was actual bones. It's just bones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's weird to me whenever I think, and I know this is confusing to some people. I think of an urn, and I think of a little urn that's got ashes yeah, in it. It can be a big, uh, yeah, big old urn, too. Yeah, there's big urns, too, so that's something to clarify. Okay. No, I'm not sure why they would choose an urn to put bones in. I'm guessing they piled them up. What about Tupperware? I don't no. think they had Tupperware. Oh, savages. Yes. So <laughs> the analysis was done <laughs> on the bones. Uh. And the guy who did it, again, history has gone back and people have really chewed up his analysis of it. Mm -hmm. But he said, yeah, they could both be boys, uh, but I can't tell that for sure. I'm pretty sure one of them's about 12 or 13, and I think the other one's around 10. Mm. Mm, yeah. They were then sealed back up, and no one has ever been allowed to get at them again. You think with modern technology, we could just with you know, some DNA, DNA, DNA testing. Yeah. Well, we totally could. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I gotta say, in a way, I kind of agree with uh, the the royalty in this situation because there's been a lot of coverage of it mm -hmm. here and there, and there's a. a footnote on this story that explains why it became so popular again, but they said, you know, okay, well, you could do all this work, and you could go ahead and check it out, and you could figure out if they are indeed the bones of those princes, and, well, two things are going to need to be figured out then. One, if they're not, what are we supposed to do with the bones? Where do we put them? Mm -hmm. uh, throw and them two... The, throw them in the landfill. And mm -hmm. two, it doesn't solve the mystery. No. We still don't know who or why... Or who killed them and specifically why that happened. So it does nothing to solve the mystery. Yeah. So I can kind of understand, you know, for out of respect reasons. Yeah, and I, I would assume that they just kind of have come to terms with it at this point, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you can kind of see how maybe in the 30s, you know, it's been a couple hundred years, maybe somebody in the royal family deeply connected with this, very interested and very curious to know if you know this was a valid claim yeah. and and you know i think since then maybe it's just family has decided well it that's just it yeah you, well, don't, you that, don't shake it up you no. don't shake up the bee the behind no. just let well, it go yeah. that and the, the other thing too is that the royals i mean they've got all kinds of people buried in places like westminster at westminster abbey and uh you know it's kind of questionable it maybe Maybe not everybody buried in there was part of the royal family. I mean, yeah, that's something that was brought know, up as well. A can of worms. Now we're going to have yeah. to do everybody? Oh, another, another can of worms. If you uh, exhumed all of their corpses and did a lot of you know, extensive DNA testing on all of them, you might find a lot of them were like, like not actually the children of the kings everybody thought they were the children of, and yes. all kinds mm -hmm. of things like yes. that. It wouldn't yeah. put up, like I said, a big can of worms. Yeah, it's just not a good thing. Because, mm -hmm. so. like, you know, for example, you know, imagine that there was a, actually a break in the lineage somewhere, like a couple of hundred years ago, and our present royal family doesn't actually have any legitimate claim to royalty anyway. I mean, that's entirely possible. And that would be and a giant scandal. Yeah. And a big, because, big I mean, issue. Well, and think about it. Think about what that would do to the, the housewives of America. Who are they going to obsess over? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, oh, geez. It's a big problem. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the theory section of everything. And I'm going to kind of break this up into two subsections, sure. believe it or not, of theories. They were murdered or they weren't? Okay. So we're going to start with they were murdered. Okay. So who could have done it? Who could have killed them? Colonel Mustard in yeah, the with, library with yes, a candlestick. Exactly. All right. So our first and most obvious culprit is Richard III. I don't like that one. Okay. Well, but and, and you, well, you might like some of the stuff that's in this theory then. Because okay. there's holes in this theory. I think there are... Big there, problems, yeah. but what do you got? Well, it just seems like he had a pretty solid grip. I mean, it's not like there were a bunch of people running around saying, no, you don't have a legitimate claim. You know, the church was behind him. Most of the powerful people in England were behind him. Parliament later passed a thing that said, yeah, no, these boys don't have any claim. Their mother was on the run, which was a great argument for why they wouldn't have been legitimate sons. Mm -hmm. The thing to Just remember, to though, I mean, is that if you have royalty, 
that potentially could somehow revalidate their claim to the throne, that's a threat. Yeah, but they're 13. It is. But I mean, they're not always going to be 13. That's you know, true, and but... If, and they, if they disappear, too, that's kind of like um, that's kind of like an implicit acknowledgement on your part if you're Richard III mm -hmm. that they are the, the legitimate heirs. If you, yeah. if you felt that, that their claim was so strong that you needed to kill them. Well, and the thing is, is that there were all these rumors about the boys having been killed and he never responded to any of those and he also never opened an investigation as to where were the boys? Well, yeah. that's kind of funny. You'd, you'd think somebody would be asking those questions. I mean, they sort of go away and... Uh, and well, it, it, it was everybody... It was it was rumor. Everybody's like, we haven't seen the princes. Well, they must have been killed. On and on 